Looking back at the computers and mobile phones of the past, it's incredible to see the amount of computer power and speed that we can now compress into the smallest of devices. This has been made possible because as technology advances, computer chip manufacturers have been able to increase the number of transistors in a chip. You could say that transistors are to computers what brain cells are to us humans. They are incredibly tiny components made of silicon in the computer chip that actually do the computing. This means that they can process inputs and outputs by blocking or allowing the flow of electricity. In this video, we are going to talk about Moore's law and exponential growth and how these concepts relate to what we've been talking about so far in this series. Stay tuned to find out. I'm Somi Aryan. I'm a tech philosopher and the founder of the FemPeak platform, where visionary individuals come to stay in the know and ahead of the curve in business and technology. I'm super passionate about getting more people on board with Web3, investing, and financial empowerment. Please just remember, nothing I say here is financial advice, and I'm not a financial advisor. So if you are on board, let's dive right in. Moore's law refers to the observation made in 1965 by Gordon Moore, the co-founder of Intel. It basically says that the number of transistors in a computer chip or integrated circuit, IC, doubles approximately every year. This law is often cited as explanation for the exponential growth of technology. And it's even referred to by many people as the law of exponential growth. Moore's observation was first published in Electronics Magazine in an article titled, Cramming More Components Onto Integrated Circuits. And it held true for the next 10 years or so. In 1975, Moore revised the statement and predicted that the number of transistors would double every two years and that we would begin to pay less for our devices or rather that they would cost less to manufacture. For the past decade, Moore's law has worked as an important force in driving change, not only in the technology industry, but also in economics, productivity, and society itself. The possibility of being able to cram more transistors into computer chips led to manufacturers being able to create technology capable of doing more things and faster, making them more efficient and useful for us, while at the same time cutting down on manufacturing costs and size. From the first modern computers to the devices sitting in front of you right now, we can see that Moore's law has been in action. Portable devices like smartphones and tablets would not have been possible without these tiny processors, or they would have been so big that we would have to scratch the word portable from their name. Without this exponential increase in transistors, we would not have been able to have video games, GPS, spreadsheets, and many other things that we use on a daily basis. Smaller and more efficient computers have impacted so many areas of our lives, like public transportation systems, education, healthcare, and the energy sector, to name a few. Although it seems that there will come a point where making things smaller is no longer an option. The high temperatures emanating from so many transistors transistors will make it impossible to continue decreasing the size because they would need more power to cool down the system than the power already running through the circuit. If you compare your laptop to the one that you had 10 years ago, it probably hasn't shrunk so much in size, but it certainly has more than tripled in power. From your computer, phone, or tablet to your fitness watch and digital assistant like Amazon Alexa, any digital electronic devices that you have today is linked to Moore's law. Now you may be wondering, what does Moore's law of exponential growth have to do with the topics that we've explored so far in this series? In the early days of Web2 or the internet as we know it, society and businesses were presented with new tools that changed the way that we did things. Web3 and blockchain show the same promise for disruption as Web2 did. And as we continue on this exponential curve, more and more devices will appear that make these technologies mass adoptions possible. Blockchain technology's wide adoption could mean that we can finally tap into the internet's full potential in a decentralized, open, and secure environment where information is not limited by governments, big corporations, and the social systems that we have in place today. In my last video, I talked about the singularity. Moore's law, along with Metcalfe's law and Wright's law, both of which I'm going to discuss in my next two videos, are going to be some of our guiding principles as we move closer to the singularity, and they will help us make sense of the rapid changes ahead. 
If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel and press that like button. This will help more people discover these videos. Also, be sure to ping that notification bell so you're alerted when I release the next video. And let me know in the comments what other topics you would like me to cover. Finally, if you like what you see here, join the FemPeak platform where we have live mentoring sessions with industry experts and you can network with other visionaries like yourself.